Okay, it's off season and there's gonna be drills coming up galore. This is the time you get tons of work done to create those great patterns. Make your dreams come true. So that you make those massive jumps from one season to the next. However, the drills have to be right. Otherwise, you're gonna get really good at doing the wrong thing. And in this video, we're gonna talk about a thing that I see all over the social media right now and it's absolutely killing young throwers. No, God! Don't do the drill this way. I'm gonna explain what it is in this video, so check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Merite Throws Nation. And in today's video, what we're gonna discuss is do we keep the foot high or low? This is a total secret little killer. I recently saw a video of somebody teaching this and I was inspired and I don't take issue with what they're doing because I know this is what they think is the best thing, but I'm gonna politely disagree. One of the things we're trying to learn, and if you look at the best throwers in the world, you're gonna notice when they come out and you're gonna notice the height of the heel and you're gonna notice that heel coming down lower because that is going to influence the entry and the axis enable you to get around the left. Now I'm seeing people do some drills and they're teaching that the, the heel is up high and they're coming around and they're holding it and, the, and they're staying high and then they're going here. Now think about this logically. This is why I'm going to say don't do that anymore and if you're seeing any videos like that or you're watching stuff, don't do it because what we talked about in one of our previous videos about some distance killers, we were talking about what causes over rotation. And when you stay up on the ball of the foot, you've got the, you've got the calf already plantar flex. And think about it, a sprinter has the pads and the blocks angled like this because they're basically in this position so that there's, there's no pre-flexion. They're, they're loaded up their knees are so when they push, they'll basically contract plantar flex and that's gonna increase speed. So to have a throw where we need to drive across the circle, if we are already up on the ball of the foot, we're already in essence have a flex calf. So how fast can I run on a preloaded flex calf? I'm not gonna run fast. You don't see any NFL receivers doing that. You don't see anybody who's trying to be fast doing that. And last time I checked, when we're throwing the discus or the rotational shot, we have to be fast and so, if you're doing drills where you're learning to stay up on the ball of the foot and come in here, you're not learning how to sequence the load through the hips and what's gonna help also set up a sweep. And we'll talk about that in another video. But the key thing is, is if you're doing 180s, keep that heel lower. And then as we're going to be coming in and pushing everything in, now I'm gonna be able to get that left or my sprint side moving into the throw. So whether you believe you should push off of it or only pull it, we teach to push and pull from our pillar three to four. The key thing is, is if you're pre-flexed, you can't do it. You're not gonna create as much speed and therefore you're not gonna throw as far. So real quick, just to kind of illustrate my point, I'm gonna show you the feet of five world-class throwers. As we're looking through, when we look at these videos, we really fundamentally believe in the following. You've gotta mimic and drill movements that are as close to the throw as humanly possible. Because if I'm drilling something that I'm gonna do in my throw, it's gonna carry over into my throw. I'm training the pattern and therefore when I throw, I do the same movement. I don't wanna have two different movements. So so if you're always learning to stay up on the ball of the foot, you're gonna have a funky entry and it's gonna cost you a lot of distance. And I think it's really critical, especially for new coaches and new throwers, you wanna avoid this. Even if you're somebody who's a little bit more experienced and you're trying this stuff, you're just cutting yourself, you're cutting your nose off right away. So don't do it. So again, let's look at these top throwers. Let's look at how these guys set up. When they set up and you look at their feet and you see them coming out, you'll notice that the entry side heel is typically elevated, no matter who we put up. Notice how they all have the heel elevated and watch how as they shift from pillar one, one to two into starting pillar three, notice the heel position, how it's dropping down. It's not on the ground, but it's it's much lower than where it started because that has a direct impact on how that axis is set up and how you're gonna be able to move around it. If you stay high, you're gonna be real rotational. You're gonna lose the linear motion into the thrower, the ability to create that linear line, and then that's gonna slow you down. Too much rotation means you're just spinning in place too much. We're not gonna be able to, again to create the right type of speed across the circle, which is what we need into the middle. And we're trying to get the, that left foot from that point down to the ground as fast as possible. And that high heel is another thing. It's going to typically result in 
a slow floating left into the power position or enter your know, sprint leg into your block that leg is going to be slow and that's going to kill you hopefully you enjoyed this video if you have any questions be sure to list them below we're going to be doing some new stuff picking comments and giving away some free stuff like video analysis and different things like that so be sure to comment thumbs up if you like this video found it helpful be sure to hit that subscribe button and we will see you on the next video you set the wrong orbit right from the start it's gonna be really difficult to correct that are there people who do and people who have unique orbits yes like looking at Perez